first thing you have to understand is the 666, the mark of the beast. This is the one thing that keeps everybody in this framework with all of the, you know, the secret and all these things. The reason why it doesn't work for them is because they're still caught in the mark of the beast. They're still caught as the less than man. They're not acting as a god, they're acting as a little man. So what you have to understand, and I'm gonna to explain to you, and if you stay till the end of the video, I'm gonna give you a chance to get a free copy of my international best-selling book, number one on Amazon. It's called Allow, Mastering the Law of Least Effort to Receive Your Desires. I'll give you a link to get the free ebook with the free e-course, and it's no fluff, no nonsense. It just takes you through the principles I'm going to teach you today and the processes that will actually put you back into your power and give you a life that you dream of faster than anything possible. Now, this is what we're talking about. This is what's important for you. This is the fall of man. This is what is preventing you from manifesting what you want. Now, here's where it dates back to. Here are the origins of this. See, all of the new age people, they want you to get in your mind and think. They want you to do this thought process. And that is a distraction. That will make you uh, fail. Because thought comes from Toth. It's the, you know, the god of knowledge. But thought is actually designed to take you from a place of knowledge and knowing and understanding. And the symbology, the occultic symbology of the question mark is your power gets inverted, turned upside down, and you fall away from your power and you go on a quest. So what happens is you move from a place of knowing to a place of on a quest. You step outside of your power. So when you do that, that is when you embrace the 666. And here's how this works out. Now, you are a triune human being. You live in three kingdoms. You have an inner kingdom, a middle kingdom, and an outer kingdom. So all of these kingdoms are essential for you to understand and how you operate your life. And whenever you go on a quest, and whenever you step outside of your power, you're always asking six questions. Who, what, when, where, why, and how? Who's gonna get it for me? What's, gonna, what's it gonna look like? When's it gonna happen? Where is my fortune? Where is my miracle? Why isn't it happening? And how am I going to do it? Whenever you ask these six questions, what you do is you engage on a quest through three separate kingdoms, through your inner, middle, and outer, and now you have the six, six, six. Now you are in the fallen state of man. So when you do that, you have stepped outside of your knowing, outside of your power, and you have actually disengaged yourself from being able to manifest at will and you put yourself in a process where you will not manifest what you want and that's exactly what they want for you. So what I'm going to show you how to do and it's part of my book and you can get a free copy of it is I'm going to give you a process to take you from being a person that says I think I think to becoming a person that says I know and once you know then you don't have to think anymore. So, the solution is simple. It's called the ABC Break Process. I'm going to show you what I learned that allowed me to go from a bedridden and bankrupt person with Lyme disease to a seven-figure income to having astute, sound, perfect health in a few years by understanding how to get out of the six degrees of separation through three kingdoms, step into my power, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this book. In fact, if you stay in this video right here, I'm going to show you the ABC break process and how to do it. But I do suggest you go and download this book, get the information, and put it to use. It's going to change your life forever, I guarantee it. Take care. God bless and love you. Hey, it's Matthew. And I am going to teach you the ins and outs of the ABC break process. It's actually very very simple. You probably already have done this in your life at least once, if not many times. You were born with the power, the godlike power to choose whatever reality you wanted to live in. The problem is that when we grow up, we get educated by well meaning, good sounding authority figures who are actually ass backwards. It's an upside-down anti-civilization that we live in. 
everything is actually inverted. So, take everything you think you know and push it off to the side. When I first discovered this process, I was 12 years old. Or I should say rediscovered the process. I remember even earlier than 12 years old, but I'm going to come back to this in just a minute. When I was 8 years old, I remember doing this, and I had a uh, music device. What was I using back then? That was um, tapes. Remember when tapes used to be around, the cassette tapes? So I had a cassette tape, and I remember it was a, a Def Leppard album, and it was Pyromania, Def Leppard Pyromania. I used to love that, that album, and I would put it on, and I would listen to it before I go to bed, and I would visualize myself at an older period in my life. You know, I was eight. I would visualize myself being old enough to drive and having a crotch rocket, and I would picture myself in the crotch rocket just zooming down the street, you know, with my girlfriend on back, and the music made me feel so good I'd get goosebumps, and it was like having this, this it was like a high, you know, I was visualizing something that brought me a lot of excitement, but also the music was inducing and amplifying the being choice, the ABC break process. Well, what happened is, is that, you know, I used to do that periodically, and then I actually lived that, and I did the same with hockey. I used to, uh, before I go to bed or whenever I get home from school, if I was bored, I would just put on my favorite music. I would imagine myself you know, being the star of the high school hockey team. That was as big as my dream ever was. That's why I never achieved the higher levels. I played for almost 20 years, and it was so easy because I had programmed myself from a young age to be who I became. I visualized it. I became it in my being choice. In my being choice, I carried myself as if I was that person every day, all day, even after I made the visualization process happen. Just stay with me because this is all going to come together and make absolute sense in just a few moments. So my life sort of fell apart at age 12. Now we're getting back to where we started. My, uh, my role model, my, my grandfather, passed away. And... Uh, I remember it hurt so bad. You see, that was the second father figure that was taken out of my life. My original father, uh, I get along with him great now, by the way, so I'm not going to make a victim story out of this. It's just the way that my life shaked out is that my original father uh, was not around from age three onward. Uh, very often, he was a few times here and there. And my grandfather, who assumed the role of, you know, being my father figure, had a horrible cancer, and this is where the story actually gets good. It's a, it's a bad story, but it has a good message. So he, uh, he died really, really, really fast from a, a very aggressive form of cancer, and I remember, you know, before he died, about a couple years prior to that, I remember, you know, we would watch TV at night and we'd practice hockey and he was always interacting with me and it was fun. We'd get some ice cream, we'd practice hockey, we'd laugh. And I remember he told me he was going to retire and he was going to live his life with the love of his life. He loved my grandma and he never stopped loving her. Um, and he was going to have his dream. He was going to buy a Mazda Miata and he was going to drive my grandma around in, in this Miata and that was a very humble dream that was his dream unfortunately that didn't happen he ended up getting this cancer and within a few short months he was dead and I remember being at the um, at the hospital and he wasn't one to make a victim of himself he didn't like to talk or express when things weren't going well he was a very tough, you know, man, and I remember him whispering to my grandma, and it wasn't really whispering, I heard him say it, and he looked over at me, and he looked at my grandma, 
And he said, make sure that Matthew lives his dreams. Don't let him give up. That was his dying message to me, to her. Maybe that was his legacy. Who knows? Anyway, after his passing, I became horribly, horribly depressed. And um, it was so bad I didn't speak. I, I, I didn't want to talk. I wouldn't talk to my friends, and um, it all started because, you know, at the funeral, I, I bottled up all the emotions, and I didn't want to cry. I wanted to be strong. I wanted to be strong because I wanted, you know, my grandpa, in his honor, I wanted him to know that I was strong. It wasn't the right thing to do. I should have cried. I should have let it out, but I wanted to be tough, and uh, I suppressed all this stuff inside. And for months, I didn't want to talk. I didn't want to express anything. I became numb. And my life started to get really disastrous. I developed this terrible acne. It was the, the most ugliest acne you could ever probably imagine. It was uh, all over my face and very predominant. And, um, you know, it's sort of a, a statement in itself, like, don't look at me like this is what I felt about myself on the inside I felt I was a terrible hideous person I had a lot of demons I had a lot of thoughts about how I was less than my life was not working I used to get on my bike and I would take my anger and aggression out on the bike I would bike for hours every single day that summer and I would uh end up having to sneak out of my grandma's house at night and go on top of um, a hill it, and I would take my bike and I would throw it on the ground and I would uh, I would express anger and uh, you know this stuff started coming out it started coming out in that way I couldn't bottle it up forever I did that for several weeks probably a couple months even and I remember just crying out to God and saying God I hate my life. I hate me. Why did you do this to me? And I had a lot of victim ideas crossing through my mind and a lot of anger and resentment. You know, my second father gone. I didn't have the covering of an authority to help me navigate life. And I felt unwanted, unworthy, unloved. All these demons that would torment me. Girls didn't like me. And that was what hurt the most. I, I really wanted to be accepted, loved, and approved. And none of that was happening. Uh, I couldn't give it to myself. And, you know, the amount of frustration that I felt was horrendous. And I remember one night just sitting on, on that hill when I finally was all, all expressed out, all the anger was gone. And I remember it's one of the few times when I actually heard the voice of God. There, there are times when you can actually hear a voice in your head, like the voice of God uh, it was one of those times when I heard the voice of God. And it said, What do you want? And that was it. I was like, What do you want? And I was like, What do you mean, what do I want? You know? Well, the whole time, it, it was, I had a transformation. I had an epiphany. You see, this is where the ABC break process actually came in. You see, I felt the resistance. I was so resistant. My mind was dominating the day. And then that thought came in and I heard it. What do you want? And that stopped. It broke my pattern. And so I made a choice. I said, well, I want to be, I want to be handsome. I want to be liked. I want to be prop, uh, what do you call that? Uh, popular. I want life to work for me. And then I came up with a, a mantra and I, I, you know, I had this, um, you know, I am, you know, it's very, it's very intimate, you know, it's kind of personal, but you know, back at the time I said, I am, I am lean and I am gorgeous and I am healthy and girls like me. And I said something like that. And, you know, that's what I thought would make me happy. I, I needed attention. I really needed attention bad at that age. 
So I came up with that, and um, then I remembered when I was younger how I used to visualize what I really, really wanted. So my mind had all this negativity that it was key, it was trying to throw at me, and I I had a break from it because I I heard this voice, "What do you want?" So I turned it around. I said, "This is what I want," and then. I started to think about it. What does that look like? So I stepped into the picture and I started to imagine myself being that person. And then I put my music on in my head. I always had music and I amplified the emotions. I played my favorite music and I started to do that. Well, to make a long story short, it was about six months later, and I became very, very popular. I became very, very liked. Uh, my acne, my acne cleared up. How amazing was that? Well, you could say, well, that's because you know you met the right doctor, and finally they took you off the antibiotics and they put you on the right stuff. But you know that all came because I chose to be the person that I saw in my mind. I made a being decision choice and I amplified it in my inner kingdom so that the sensations, you know, were, that's how I was resonating. That's what I was vibrating in. So my whole reality changed to match that. And that's what happened. And within six months I was living that and it was amazing. And then, you know, when the negativity would come to me, I did this uh, process. It was fun. It was kind of like, um, I've, I've heard the Catholics call it like, you know, when they count their, their uh, rosary beads or whatever. I'm not really into that religion. But what happened was I had this thing that I said, you know, I had this, uh, it was my cue. You know, I, you know, I'm lean, gorgeous, you know, girls like me. Whatever I said back then, I had that. It was my thing. And so when the negativity would come and I'd have a bad day and I'd start to feel really down, I would just, I'd say, you know, count it on my hand. I'd just count it like that. And I would just keep doing that. And what that was doing was eventually that would lead me into a place of where I could let go of the inner resistance. It's much faster now because now the question is, could I just accept for this moment things the way they are? So if you could just accept for this moment to allow things the way they are, uh, to be the way they are, then you can get to that same place. You see, it took me a long time. I'd have to count on my hands for a long time just because that was an external action that allowed me to get to a place of um, relaxing so I could let that inner resistance go. And then I would go into my inner kingdom and engage the middle kingdom and create with God-like power, because we all have it, I would be come, become the solution to the problem change the physics of my mind, change the vibration in the inner kingdom, and by law, by law, the outer kingdom had to change. I didn't know all these words back then. I just knew how it was done. I never forgot. I mean, we all are born with creative ability. Nobody ever talked me out of it, and I just had to remember it. So anyway, all that pain and all that suffering and all that stuff was gone in just a matter of a few months and I was living in the polar opposite spectrum where everything good was coming to me. All of a sudden I was the star hockey player on the high school team. My acne cleared up. I had a girlfriend. I had other girls that were giving me attention. I had friends that were you know, popular in school. And there it was. I was living in the vision that I created. It's not rocket science. This is what you were endowed with. And it's not a thinking man's game. I didn't consult my mind for answers. I directed my mind. And most importantly, since feeling gets the blessing, that part of enabling such strong sensations to the vision amplifies the being choice and brings it about in a very efficient way. And then when you're done, then it's just remaining in the state of allowing and that's just a never minding process just 
pay no attention to you know your lying eyes because what you see outside of yourself is the world that you did create previously you can allow that outer kingdom to keep reinforcing and recreating the same thing over and over again that's living by default or you can become a conscious creator and change it and choose out of your current circumstances now the thing is is when you up the ante and you up the stakes sometimes it's good to get reinforcement and that's where strategic partners mentors coaches etc come in I didn't have any of these things when I was younger um, you know not that you know you go out and you tell people your dreams and, and they work with you on it but life gave me that by default you see I had that by default come into my experience which was great I had Bob Suter and in the book I talk about he, he's one of the most influential people that I ever met in my life he actually shaped a great deal of my life because what he did was he was the rock that sort of kept me um, believing in myself long enough so that I could become the manifestation you see that's what a strategic partner does you see when Bob came into my life it was at the perfect time of course it was I had already started to decide who I wanted to be therefore by law of that being choice I allowed all the people circumstances events places things that are necessary to come into that space see that's how it works so Bob came in and you know here's a guy who his legacy wasn't just hockey he lived and breathed hockey he you know I think they won their state tournament in high school then they won the collegiate championships when he was on the team and then they won the 1980s US Olympic gold medal championship against Russia when that was the impossible you see he was on all those teams he had a legacy of being a champion that guy his consciousness if you played on his team that consciousness became your strength and that is the power of a strategic partner coach mentor etc so his strength became my strength and that reinforced my decision to be the person that I was programming myself to be and the rest is what they call history that's how it's done that's how it works that is the miracle transformative process made simple you know ABC easy as one two three it's actually three two one but you could say ABC is easy as one two three remember to take your ABC process let me tell you how it works a little bit more okay if you're still with me you still want to hear this the stakes can get higher it doesn't matter what's happening in your life you have godlike power to change it you are the power in your life all that you interact with is yourself in this world you make the rules in life by which you're judged and the only one judging you is you it's a game between you and you in reality so later in life um, I developed my you know anorexia bulimia and night eating syndrome talk about a mind job and so for years and years I lived in that uh, conundrum of uh, always trying to solve the problem from the level of that was being created by I mean I kept trying to consult my mind to solve the problem of this eating disorder and my mind was creating the eating disorder you see how ridiculous that is that's what people do that's what people do that gets stuck is okay so my, my mind my mind would have these triggers and I would say okay I am going to uh, use my willpower I'd write out the whole day this is what I'm gonna eat today it's gonna be perfect I'm gonna feel so good well I might make it an hour maybe two hours maybe a day sometimes two days really if I had a lot of willpower I could make it two to three days tops 
Then a trigger would come and I would totally lose control, all out binge purge, and then I would starve myself, then I would overexercise, use laxatives. You see, all this stuff is psychosis. The mind, my mind was, was in a very, very bad place. And um, I kept consulting that same mind for the answers on how to get out of it. So what do you think happened? It's the unsolvable riddle I kept spinning in circles for five and a half years. Okay, well, how I got out of that is the ABC break process. I began doing that and imagining myself being past the problem. That opened up. That opened up, like I said, the possibilities where the people that were required, the teachings that were required, were able to come into my experience because I was choosing to be at a different level. Being the solution brings in the solution into your awareness. So then I got the answers. And within 24 hours of having the answer, I walked away from those uh, insanity conditions and never looked back. So here's what's funny. Here's what really happens. According to quantum physics, you have a reality. It's this little box. You're in the box. This is your reality. It's, it's because of who you're choosing to be. You're playing at a certain level. And everything that belongs in that being choice is in this box. So let's say you have a $30,000 a year income and you're struggling to get by and your relationships are kind of mediocre and life's kind of really not that exciting and you're living like most people um, just kind of getting by okay you're in this box and now you all of a sudden hear this opportunity like uh, let's say it's a network marketing company and you're gonna you know this is an opportunity for you to like become financially free and it really excites you. You really like this idea. So you take the idea on. And you start, you know, contacting your friends, neighbors, associates, and you start sampling the product. You're building the business. But you just can't seem to break through. See, I, I was this guy for many, many years. And no matter what, it seems to kind of fall apart. Well, that's because you're still living in this box. So because of the being choice you made, you can't have a six or seven figure income because it doesn't correspond with the being choice you're living in. So the key is, is to get out of the box and have an expanded version of yourself that you become. And then everything that belongs to that expanded version of yourself comes into your life because of the law of Attraction. It comes in by the law of least effort when you make the being decision required to do that. So again, how do you do that? So the first thing is anytime you try to pursue something that reaches the limits of your box, that's when the resistance gets cranked up. That's when I wrote in the book, it's time to go to battle. Because that is the terror barrier of your conditioned mind trying to pull you back in the box to keep you where it thinks you're safe. The easiest way to do that is through a strategic partner, coach, or a mentor. Because what happens is their consciousness becomes your power that pulls you out of the box and holds you in that space long enough for your mind to make the change and then have an expanded version of yourself. Here's how it happened for me. All right, so I was uh, 28 years old and I started to get really sick. I started to uh, become immobilized. I lost everything, lost my job. Um, lost everything, became bankrupt and bedridden for almost two years, uh, and I was dying. I had Lyme's disease, 
my life was really, really bad. Um, so what I started to do is the only thing that I knew how to do. I knew it worked every single time without fail or exception in the past. But I was scared because I knew that this was serious business. I was dying. This is not a game. This was not a joke anymore. This this was this was all or nothing. All right? I started to get a dream board. I got a fitness magazine. I cut out a body of uh, at the time it was Frank Zane, you know, former uh, Mr. Olymp USA or whatever he was, for, uh, Mr. Olympia, I think. Frank Zane had this amazing body, and this guy was just the picture of health in my mind. Put him on the dream board, okay? That's just a poster board with pictures that represent what I want to see my life as. So I put him on there. Then I put on, like, a new car. I put on a big mansion. I put on a stack of money. I put on a happy relationship. You know, I had my son on there. And I had this vision. Like when I was on the hill and my life wasn't working and God said, what do you want? What do you want? Well, that's what I want. I was so far from it vibrationally. But that doesn't matter. Okay? I started to do that with my headphones. And I remember listening to the same songs you know, and I, I had all day because I couldn't work, you know. I mean, so here's how I got out of that situation. I started to revision or imagineer. I call it the ABC break process, an amplified being choice. I felt the resistance. I hated my life. I hated being sick. I mean, resistance was with me all day, every day. But you can't get there from there. You can't get to where you want to be by going into that resistance and trying to push against what is. You have to accept what is and then make a new choice out. It's important you get that. You have to accept what is and then make a new choice out. So, step one is I recognize, you know, it is not it. You see... It is not it, as in like my desire to want to go into that resistance and change my life is not going to work. Okay? Step two is could I accept for just this moment and allow things the way they are to be? For just this moment, could I allow things to be as they are? Well, yes, for just this moment, I could allow myself to be that way. For just this moment, yes. And then I just kept saying that until the resistance got a little bit lighter, okay? I mean, I'm not asking myself if I can accept dying and I could be this sick forever. Just for this moment, can I accept that I created this and just to let it be for just this moment? Yes. And then you do that for a couple minutes and all of a sudden you feel a little bit lighter. Well, that's when it's time to go and make a being choice and to step into... You know, I looked at the dream board and then I had those images in my mind. So I'd step into being that person, put my headphones on and turn the volume up and feel that like you would never feel. You know, I mean, that's like a drug. It's like, wow, that feels good. You see what I'm saying? If I had to, I'd even have some caffeine. I'd have to drink some coffee and get myself really feeling it. Just step into it, really make the colors bright. Own it. Feel it. Be that person. Walk through life as that person and look back on your life as all the cool things that happened, you know, as if you're talking to yourself five years out in the future, coming back to the present to talk to yourself like, look at all this. This is how cool my life is. This is what's really going on. You see, that is your God power to change your reality. That's how you use your God power. You don't think your way through it because the mind is creating the problem itself. Einstein said you can't change the problems you create with the same level of consciousness or mind. That's creating them. So you have to rise above. So your consciousness is keeping you in this box. So to change your consciousness, you have to choose out of your box. You have to become the person who already has solved the problems, step into it, and then look back and see how it all 
came together from that vantage point. And then what that does is that opens the allowing process up. Because from that place of being, you are restructuring the universe because you are coming from this perspective where those things that you desire are now in vibrational harmony with you so they will start coming into your life like magnetized you know quanta bits I mean it's gonna come to you that's allowing that's what we're talking about we're talking about how do you turn the allowing on see allowing is not a passive process it's an active process you have to take control dominion of your mind you have to become the power Get your mind off of the throne and take your possession back. So here's how it played out. Since I started to do that, my external life started to change. Now, crisis is always going to occur at the season of change. That's a good thing. When the crisis occurs, it means you are on the cusp of a, of a breakthrough. That's when you really have to mount up and push through because that is how you activate faith and faith schedules your miracle so you want to schedule your miracles and not sit around and hope they're gonna show up because if you sit around and hope they're gonna show up you're playing life weak and you're gonna get weak results God does not respond to necessity or need God is not going to give you a healing or a financial miracle based on your need or necessity. You receive these based on your faith. Faith is what moves mountains, not necessity. So here's how it plays out. So since I started doing that, it was several months I did that for, it was actually the only thing I could look forward to throughout the day because it was the only time I felt good. You know, I kept doing that, kept doing that, kept doing that. Then things started to shift in my world. First, it was uh, we decided to make a move. So we moved. And then I started to, you know, open myself to new channels, literally, listening to new podcasts, new, new videos, etc., and I found a mentor and then I had the perfect one-two combo hook line and sinker you see the answer started to come and I found the mentor to give me that consciousness so I could see the reason why you have the mentor the strategic partner the coach whatever you want to call it is because you have the power to choose out of your circumstances and that is the ABC break process you choose out of your circumstances, it starts to bring things to you. The, the role of the protege and the mentor is that you can imagine the mentor, their flame is burning bright and your match is here. When you step your match into theirs, both flames burn bright. You see, what, what happens is as the protege, I was able to so honor into the mentor which means that I was willing to submit and listen and take the action and apply it applying what they what I was taught and actually doing it see that is activating faith anytime you activate faith you schedule the next season and you schedule the miracle it's important that you understand that so I activated my faith by applying what the mentor was telling me and by doing so what that does is it opens up a conduit where an exchange is made I applied the honor and then the blessing of the whatever power the mentor had was transferred into me see the flame both are burning bright now you see their flame became my flame that's the power that's what happens 
None of it exists without faith. None of it works without faith. So, in a nutshell, you have the tools now. You know what to do. So let me tell you how that worked out. Within less than three and a half years, I had a seven-figure income. Today, I have health that is better than I had when I played hockey uh, 20 years ago. And what, what, what's really going to blow your mind is what I tell you in a minute. So just hold on. My relationships are fantastic. I have children. I love them. My life is fantastic. Okay? So here's what's going to blow your mind. When you make a being choice and you become you that you want to be, your timeline, you change your, if you change your present, you change your past. I was never the sick person that I used to be since I changed my being choice. That's what quantum physics is now telling us is absolute science. It's true. Jesus said you have a house with many mansions. You uh, have parallel universes that you go in and out of all day, every day. And this is what science knows to be true now. This isn't just some airy-fairy, woo-woo, pie-in-the-sky stuff. This is cutting-edge, real-life, ancient, old-timey wisdom. See, the old-time wisdom is actually new discovery. You know, see, there is no time. It's just merging in one synchronistic now. So when you change who you're being now, you change your past, and you also schedule your future, because it's all happening right here, right now. Enough said. Use this process. It has never failed in my experience. And use the tools in the book allow, and um, that's all I can tell you. You're worth it. So design your life, be conscious about it, and take your power back.